A Lazy Town was a very popular children's series since its launch 20 years ago. The formula for its success was due to several very striking factors, such as the songs, the costumes, some disturbing puppets, but above all, Sportacus, a superhero played by the actor Magnus Sheaving, who at almost 60 years old is in better physical condition than you and me put together. His character, being the protagonist of the series, promoted a healthy life, full of exercise and good nutrition, and was impressively ripped although at the time we did not notice it. And like all superheroes, he had a weakness, sweets. Not because he liked them, but because the moment Sugar entered his system, Sportacus collapsed, basically making Sugar his own kryptonite, almost as if he were a diabetic. This brings up a theory both strange and popular. And if Sportacus wasn't leading a healthy lifestyle just on his own initiative, perhaps he was forced to lead this kind of life because of his medical condition, which would explain his very healthy eating and why he's so obsessed with promoting exercise, preventing the kids of Lazy Town from developing the same chronic illness he has. So get comfy, find your favorite healthy treats and get ready for a much healthier video than usual, or have a coke. We've got to die of something. Just so we're all on the same page, let's first explain where the original theory came from, and I think one of the posts that best explains it simply is one made a decade ago by user the TheZeroCrat, who says the following, I think Sportacus is diabetic. In the show, when he eats sugar apples, he basically faints and falls to the floor, leaving him unconscious and in shock. This could be because he has type 2 diabetes. Also, he exercises and eats healthy, and when he doesn't, he goes into a state of fatigue. These are some things that people with diabetes have to do to live well. And if you think about it, when the rest of the town acts unhealthy, they are not as affected as Sportacus when he does the same things. It's a theory discussed quite a bit on old internet forums, and if we take a closer look at these discussions we'll see that the problem is not whether or not he has diabetes, but rather not deciding whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And don't worry, I didn't know the difference either. Diabetes is a chronic disease, which has many variants, but in general it is characterized by elevated blood glucose, a molecule that is one of the main sources of energy in our body, which we acquire after food intake. Once glucose increases in our blood, the pancreas is in charge of releasing insulin that travels through the same blood, and allows our cells to absorb glucose. This is how the process of absorption of this molecule works normally. But when you have type 1 diabetes, there is an alteration that prevents the production of insulin. Type 1 diabetes is also known as juvenile diabetes, since it is detected mainly in children or even adolescents. Basically, the diagnosed person does not produce insulin because the beta cells of the pancreas that are in charge of this task are destroyed due to a failure in the autoimmune system. In the absence of insulin secretion, the cells cannot absorb glucose, which leads to elevation of the same glucose in the blood, causing urination, irritability, blurred vision, polyphagia or extreme appetite, and in the long term and without medical treatment, it can even cause collateral damage, such as kidney damage. The most common way to counteract this disease is by giving patients insulin through daily injections, and although it is much more common for young people to develop this type of diabetes, adults can develop it with a lower probability. So, is Sportacus a type 1 diabetes patient? Personally, I don't think there is much evidence to support this idea. We may not know much about this guy's life. This hero's real name is Alex, who used to live in Lazy Town when he was a kid, a very different one from the rest, as he was impressed with the personality and physical abilities of the previous Spotacus, Spotacus 9th, and was one of the few kids who didn't get carried away by Robbie Rotten's influence. When Sportacus 9th left Lazy Town, he left the mantle to Alex, who decided to honor him and followed in his footsteps to become a worthy successor, and is the Sportacus we see throughout the series. This story was revealed in the old webpage of the series, and although it is true that it no longer exists, the community of followers continues to take this story as part of the canon. In that story, there is never any reference to Alex being a sick child or having any kind of ailment beyond being shunned by Robbie and the rest of his friends for being the only one inclined to a healthier lifestyle, but Sportacus may have developed this disease in his adult life. If we look at it from this point of view, I also don't see symptoms that would suggest his relationship to this specific type of diabetes. First of all, he never injects himself with insulin, which is something he should do on a daily basis in order to perform at his best, especially considering his demanding physical activity. We can assume that he has good vision given his performance without any glasses and he does not seem to have an extreme appetite. He may have managed to control his symptoms, but since there is no insulin anywhere, we can rule out this option. So, type 2 diabetes. This type of diabetes is much more common, and unlike type 1, 
In this variant, insulin is produced in the pancreas. The problem is that for some reason, the insulin receptors of the cells do not seem to pick up the presence of the hormone. And once the tissues stop responding as they should, the beta cells begin to secrete more insulin, which ends up causing wear and tear, and insulin production ends up being reduced anyway, and a phenomenon called insulin resistance occurs. In addition, type 2 diabetes is difficult to detect in time, since it is a disease that progresses slowly and gradually, so it is often detected when the patient's health has deteriorated considerably, which can further complicate the disease itself. The symptoms are very similar to the first type, although in this case it is also closely linked to the appearance of obesity. The difference is that if this type of diabetes is detected early, it is much easier to control the blood sugar level with a low calorie diet, as well as by performing regular physical exercise, even with medications that increase the accessibility to insulin or the presence of glucose in the blood. Sound familiar? This type of diabetes is much more likely, and Spartacus may have been detected early, and that is why we see him being so strict with his diet and physical activity to keep his glucose levels under control. Although similar to the previous example, we also do not see him taking any medication, and as far as we know, Sportacus has never had any obesity problems. Since he was a child, he has led a healthy life. These last factors do not rule out the presence of diabetes, since he could have developed it, and simply be in a phase where he does not need to be constantly medicated, and neither does he need to become obese which makes it likely that Spotacus does have problems of this caliber that force him to lead a healthy life even if he did not want to do so. In fact, his balanced diet and daily routines could be a sufficient argument to link the two, but it happens that when he eats sugar apples or any candy, his reaction is exaggerated, suspiciously exaggerated. Also, when you are diabetic, you have to be very careful with your wounds, as blood vessels are often damaged as collateral damage, which causes poor blood flow, and thus, poor healing. That leads to several patients losing limbs if they are not taken care of efficiently and if we take into account that Spotacus is constantly risking many injuries or that he has taken good hits when falling into Robbie's traps and doesn't seem to present injuries it makes me think that maybe he doesn't have diabetes as such. Aside from the fact that his healthy treats are fruits, which he eats all the time, and while fructose can be beneficial, if you have diabetes, you should also regulate your fructose intake, as it also produces insulin resistance. And the point that completely destroys the theory is that you always automatically get better from your weakened state by eating a fruit, which simply should not happen. He should be taking metformin, or injecting insulin, or epinephrine, or something, not eating an apple. So if he doesn't have diabetes, why does he get so weak as soon as he eats sugar? We looked into other possible conditions related to sugar intake, but the vast majority led us back to diabetes and insulin resistance, and we even explored other conditions, such as galactosemia, which occurs when the body does not properly metabolize galactose, which is found in dairy products, or fructosemia, which is an intolerance to fructose. Both are obviously ruled out, since clearly fruits and milk are part of Sportacus's life, but neither can be an allergic reaction to common sugar, because although sucrose intolerance is real, having that problem would prevent you from eating fruits, because fructose also affects people with this condition. Which got me thinking, because as we already know Sportacus automatically gets better when eating a fruit, Maybe the answer is not in the reaction towards sugar as such, but to the additives found in the apples or sweets Robbie gives Sportacus, those ingredients beyond sugar that are found in all sweets but not in fruits. Robbie's ultra-processed candies such as sugar apples contain preservatives and additives such as colorings or sweeteners, and these can indeed cause an extreme allergic reaction in Sportacus. This is very rare, but definitely possible. Each person and each system can react differently, so his symptoms could be as mild as itching, redness, hives, some respiratory problems or digestive problems, but in extreme cases you can have an anaphylactic shock, and this would fit perfectly with the reaction that Sportacus has as soon as he ingests one of Robbie's apples, since suffering from anaphylaxis he can even lose consciousness, which is what happens throughout several chapters of the series. The best candidates for a reaction of that caliber are benzoates, used as preservatives, and gargum, which is used to thicken different foods, and yes, they have recorded anaphylactic attacks in relation to them, or from different combinations with these additives. Both additives are common in sweets. If Sportacus has an extreme allergy or some secret disease that produces extreme reactions to these additives, it makes complete sense that he would be knocked out when eating them. And who knows, maybe he injects adrenaline to his fruits to cure himself when he has an anaphylactic attack and that's why he is constantly full of energy, or simply the fructose wakes him up, or maybe he is an elf and as a consequence he has a completely different biology than us. 
but I'll tell you about that another day. For now it would be best to stick with the message of the show, about taking care of your diet so that you don't develop these kinds of conditions. Although I'm going to eat a pizza with a liter coke, because I have to die of something. So I hope you liked this video, remember to take care of your health and see you in the next video, bye.